Hello friends, welcome to God's Eagle Ministries. At God's Eagle Ministries, we are seeding the nations with God's word and God is transforming lives through the timeless truth in his word. Uh, today, it's uh, Wednesday, the 2nd of March, 2022. Takada content count is 2,220,526. And the title today is Perfect Stories in Perfect Words, Perfect Works, and Perfect Wonders. Are you depressed, suffering waves of attacks? Don't quit. Three steps to dealing with depression, biblically, plus prayer and fasting for Oceania. Before we go on, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this moment. Thank you for the privilege to call upon your name. Your name is a high tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. Thank you for this gift of access to your throne, any place, any time, anywhere. To you be all the praise and honor in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, even as we uh, glean upon your word, I ask, O oh God, that you breathe life upon this word. Let it reach to the dividing as it goes forth. Let it reach to the dividing as thunder of soul and spirit and bone of marrow. As many that will hear this or read this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I also pray that you send your word and your word brought healing, deliverance, and restoration. As this word goes out, I declare healing, deliverance, and restoration as a portion of as many that will hear this today or read this today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for a new day and a new dawn. Thank you for lines are falling for us in pleasant places. And we have a delightsome inheritance in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, uh, today again, um, we bring you perfect stories and perfect words, works and wonders. Are you depressed, suffering waves of attack? Don't quit. Three steps to dealing with depression, biblically plus prayer and fasting for Sharia. So hello friends, the Lord's presence, power, protection, provision and preservation rest mightily upon you in this month of March as you march forward with him. That's why the odds that are stacked up against you in Jesus name. Amen. Do you have a desire to quit what you're doing right now? Uh, in your business, ministry, career, whatever else it may be. I'm here to encourage you today. Don't quit. Wait until you read or listen to my story and see the course instruction. I woke up one morning and I had absolutely no desire to read the Bible. When I attempted to read it, it came through a strange text to me. As much as I tried, it was as if there was a screen covering my mind that would not allow me to make sense of what was written. I tried playing spiritual or worship songs but could not connect to the songs. I began to receive thoughts and ways of reminders of my failings and fallings, discouraging words, and in the midst of that, I got very clear instructions to quit what I was doing for God, that it is not necessary and nobody is being blessed or equipped by it. Well, if these ways of attack were for a few hours or for one day, I could have pushed it aside, but it continued for seven days. In the middle of that seven days, I told God I agree with the sequence of thoughts and getting and I'm quitting, I'm done. I suspended all studies and abandoned myself to session by my inner circle partners. I could not pray. Food became tasteless and no reminder of any testimonies of success in the course of our ministry effort the Lord had accomplished through our hands over and over again came to mind. When it did, it just didn't make my, make any encouraging sense to me. Towards the end of the seven days, relief came through for me and I apologized to God for even contemplating quitting in the first place. I had just come through a mild depression. The truth of the matter is that most people don't even know they have it. The enemy fell there and began attacking from other angles external to me. This culminated in my last testimony of failed attack by armed robbers. It is important at points like this in your journey with God to pull out your diary of dialogues and instructions God gave you directly. If God told you to do something, remind yourself of it. If struggling, go back to him and ask the Holy Spirit for counsel. The Holy Spirit did lead me out and told me it was an attack wrapped around depression. If you check through the Bible as you read through the book of Psalms, you read how David, a man after God's heart, went through a series of depression. Prophet Elijah, after victory among Carmel, went through depression. It is not strange to have them. It is how we handle them that matters 
how do we deal with them scripturally? Elijah in 1 Kings 19 verses 4 to 14, after a successful battle with the priests of Baal, Mount Carmel, instead of feeling victorious, Elijah felt hopeless, alone and afraid. He had low self-esteem and wanted to die, he wanted to sleep and had to be encouraged to get up and nourish himself, and nourish himself by, nourished by the angels. Elijah, a prophet, biblical hero, personal faith, was seriously depressed. Read Stephen Cole's story on how to handle depression biblically after a brief interlude with below introduction. But before we do, do that, if you missed our last post, perfect stories, perfect reasons, perfect words, perfect works, and perfect wonders, what would you do differently if you have just five years to leave? And as a Christian parent, learn from Frank's true life story on how to respond to a child heading for the precipice, uh, the child being Frank. Life was good and everything started falling apart in Frank's life. Get five counterintuitive life transforming instructions from God that just does not make common sense. Hidden reasons to obey them for spiritual growth with lasting impact plus prayer and fasting for sharing a theme, willingness and obedience. If you miss our last book release title and those contents are on the website. If you miss our last book release title, new book release, Greater Exploit 14 Prayer Points. Uh, Greater Exploit 14, prayer, uh, Perfect Prayers, World War Three Knocking, Vladimir Putin of Russia and how the world should respond concerning war in Ukraine for exploiting God. World Prophecies uh, 2022 and beyond. Visit uh, the website, it's right there. Let's pray for the people of Eshenia. Today is Wednesday, uh, they will set aside to pray for them. Pray and fasting for, for Oceania. And the theme today is Be Still. And the scripture today is Psalms 46.10. Let be, be still, know, recognize and understand that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. There are some disasters ongoing in some part of Oceania. Both COVID-19 infections raging and flooding. The Lord wants you to know that you should be still and know that He is God. Now let's pray for the people of Oceania. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. For the word you have given me to pass on to your people in the continent of Oceania. Lord, in these times of flooding and COVID-19 spreading across Oceania, visit them with relief in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cause them to be still and know that you are God. Cause these nations to exalt your name in the seeming setback as you permit some of these setbacks to get your children to return to you in repentance and in worship as the only true God. We speak to every raging storm, peace be still in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We speak to the COVID-19 virus spreading. We curse you to your roots right now and declare total wholeness for as many that are plagued by it, by them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's read Stephen Cole's piece, uh, dealing with depression, Psalms 42 to 43. Uh, the psychology instructor had just finished a lecture on mental health and was giving an oral quiz. Speaking specifically about manic uh, depression, she asks, how would you diagnose a person who walks back and forth screaming at the top of his lungs one minute, then sits in a chair weeping uncontrollably the next? A young man in the rear raised his hand and answered a basketball coach. We laughed, but real depression is a serious problem. Mild or severe, depression affects more people in our culture than any other emotional disorder, says Harvard psychiatrist Dr. Armand Nicole. Two, according to a newspaper article uh, in May of the 4th uh, of May 1987, page 48, an estimated 30 to 40 million Americans, twice as many women as men, will experience depression illnesses at least once. The disorder is so common that it is called a common cold of mental illness. It should not be surprising that the Bible has much to say about depression. A thorough study will consume many sermons. But Psalms 42 and 43 give us some solid counsel in some ancient Hebrew manuscripts. These companions' psalms are single psalms whether two sons or one, the subject is obviously similar and they are united with a common refrain of uh, Psalms 42, 5, 11 and Psalms 43, 5. Many reputable scholars think that David was the author, in which case 
The title of the sons of Korah indicates a group of Levites in charge of temple worship to whom he represented the sons. We cannot say for sure who wrote it, but we do know that the author found himself exiled from Israel and from the worship festivals of God's people. He was being taunted by enemies who said, Where is your God? Psalms 42, 3 and 10. Their oppression, Psalms 42, 9, 43 through 2, had plunged the psalmist into deep depression, but he doesn't stay depressed. He grabs himself by the shoulder, takes stock of his situation, confronts his depression, and sees God with renewed intensity. It shows us how to pull ourselves out of the nosedive of depression. When you're depressed, rouse yourself to see God as your hope and help, no matter how depressing, despairing your circumstances. I see three steps in this uh, psalm uh, for dealing with depression. Number one, you are, when you're depressed, recognize it and begin to confront yourself as why, as to why you're depressed. This first step in conquering depression is to admit it. The psalmist readily admits both to himself and to God that he is in despair. In Psalms 42, 5, 6, and 11. Psalms 43, 5. The Hebrew verb means to be bowed down or prostrated. We might say laid low or in the pits. If you don't recognize your emotional condition, either because you don't know the symptoms or you don't want to appear unscriptural or whatever, you can't deal with it. Various symptoms in varying de degrees point to depression. Note the psalmist's description of himself. He mentions his countenances. Psalms 42, 11, Psalms 43, 5. A depressed person looks sad or down, a loss of appetite, and frequent uh, crying are often present. Psalms 42, 3. He describes his anguish as pouring out his soul. Psalms 42, 4. He felt emotionally drained. He felt as if he were in deep pain, overwhelmed by the waves. Psalms 42, 7. Jonah quoted this verse when he was inside a great fish. John Jonah chapter 2 verse 3. Often depressed people feel overwhelmed by circumstances to such an extent that they are immobilized. They don't know how to cope or where to begin. The enemy's relentless taunts feel like a shattering of the psalmist's bones. Psalms 42 10. Often physical symptoms such as headaches, digestive disorders, chronic pain accompany severe depression. He repeatedly describes himself as being in despair, hopeless, and disturbed, anxious. Psalms 42, 5, 6, 11, Psalms 43, 5. The psalmist feels abandoned, even rejected by God. He is confused by it. Psalms 42, 9, Psalms 43, 2. Feelings of guilt and rejection are common symptoms of depressed people. In addition, are often fatigue, a loss of motivation to do anything, difficulty in concentrating, sleep, disturbances, either insomnia or excessive sleep, and thoughts of suicide. There are a number of causes of depression. Once you recognize the symptoms, you've got to do as the psalmist does here. Begin to confront yourself as to why you are depressed. Psalm 42, 5 and 11. Psalm 43, 5. Depression is like the red warning lights on the dashboard of your car. They tell you that there's a problem under the hood. If you keep driving and ignore the warning light, you could cause a lot of damage to your engine. So it's better pull over and figure out what's wrong. Depression may be due to physiological causes. We are complex creatures. Our emotions are not separate from our bodies. Some people are more prone to depression due to their physical makeup, glands, humans, it is. Many women struggle with depression related to their menstrual cycle. To have a baby or to menopause, certain changes in the aging process can make us prone to depression. Perhaps with pushed too hard or have been under unusual stress and were just exhausted and need some rest and a change of pace. If you're depressed, get a medical checkup if you haven't had one for a while. Depression can hit when we come down from a spiritually enriching experience. Perhaps the excitement of the early days of our faith wears off or is dulled, dulled by our trials. The psalmist here fondly recalls the earlier times when he enjoyed going to God's house in procession with other believers, Psalms 42, 4. Sometimes I have gotten depressed when I suffered a disappointment that I didn't process mentally before the Lord. I had hoped and prayed for something, but it didn't happen. If I don't consciously submit my disappointment to the Lord, I can end up feeling depressed, but not knowing exactly why until I think it through. Self-pity is another common cause of depression. And depression is a common reaction when we suffer a loss of any kind, especially the loss of a loved one through death or something else. It is important to know yourself. If your depression is just a minor mood swing, 
like a pilot flying in my uh, minor turbulence you make a slight adjustment and don't get too concerned but if you're in a nosedive you need to take some drastic action to avoid a crash the psalmist is doing that here he grabs himself by the shoulders takes to him talks to himself about what he knows to be true in spite of his feelings the contrary and eventually pulls himself out of it it takes the psalmist a while to get on top of his depression depression there are four circles of lament and hope in these two psalms it may take you a few circles of up and down before you pull out of your nosedive but the crucial thing is that you are aggressively dealing with it and not just drifting with the circumstances circumstances even if you feel depressed you are responsible to please the lord by living in obedience to his word we need to be very careful at this point we live in a feeling oriented culture we hear that feelings aren't right or wrong they just are so we need to get in touch with and accept our feelings if we defy our feelings or seek to conquer them by going against them we are in denial but we need to develop a biblical th uh, theology of emotions and way the world's cancel by the scripture many believers are defeated by depression and other negative emotion because they have not sought a biblical approach to dealing with these problems the bible says that we must discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness first timothy 4 7. discipline by definition means going against my feelings i may not feel like exercising but if i am disciplined i do it anyway i may not feel uh, like spending money impulsively but if i am disciplined i go against my feeling because i have decided to live by a point oh one counsel by the way is when you're feeling depressed you should do some exercise while even the most mature believers are susceptible to depression elijah in first kings 19 1 to 4 john the baptist in matthew 11 to 3 peter uh, in matthew 26 uh, 69 75 the bible is clear that we should be marked by joy in the lord even in some of the most difficult circumstances in john chapter 15 11 acts chapter 5 41 acts 16 25 galatians 5 22 philippians 4, 4. a consistently depressed christian is a lousy advertisement for the lord and his salvation and so we must confront our depression and bring it under the control of the holy spirit when we think rightly and act rightly or our depression will be replaced by genuine law joy in the law so the first step when you are depressed is recognize it and begin to confront yourself as to the reasons why the second step and uh, it has a, a series of uh, subsets here uh, that says that if you your depression stems from overwhelming circumstances think biblically about those circumstances learning to respond biblically to trials one of the most crucial lessons you can learn as a christian god has given us the resources to be overwhelming uh, conquerors in even the most desperate situations including torture and martyrdom romans 8 35 37 living by faith means choosing to believe god in his word rather than circumstances so we need to answer several questions when we are overwhelmed by circumstances as the psalmist was so what are the steps the subset steps in these second steps uh, one are my uh, questions to ask are my circumstances due to any known sin on my part in some 32 38 and 51 david's depression was due to his sins if we are we are aware of disobedience to the lord we need to confess it turn from it and appropriate his cleansing and forgiveness if we're not aware of any sin, then we need to be careful to continue walking uprightly before the Lord, not giving the temptation to rail against God in our time of trial. There's a difference between complaining to the Lord in a submissive manner and shaking your fist in his face. The psalmist here doesn't mention any sin on his part. He's confused and he feels as if God has rejected him. He tells God those feelings, but it's also clear that he had taken his stand by testifying to his enemies that the Lord was his God. They were throwing it back in his face, asking, where is your God? This added to his despair because he didn't want to bring reproach to the name of the Lord. The psalmist wants to follow God's light and truth. Psalm 43, 3. He wasn't suffering due to sin. Second question to ask in the second step of uh, dealing with depression. Does God want me to do anything to change my circumstances or am I shut up until he asks? 
Sometimes the Lord wants us to take steps to get out of our troubles. Write a resume, call for a job interview, it is it. I remember once when I was single, feeling as if I'd never, I would never get a, a good godly wife. At the time, I was meeting with a few Christians in a church house where there weren't any candidates for a wife. There was a commercial on TV for Heads Rent a Car, which showed a person flying through the air and into the seat of a convertible while the announcer said, let hers put you in the driver's seat. As I was praying for a wife, the Lord brought that commercial to my mind and said, I'm not going to bring your wife floating through the window while you pray. If you want me to bring your wife, put yourself in some place where you might meet a likely candidate. It was shortly after that that I was introduced to Marla as a wife. The Sami seemed to be shut up in his overwhelming circumstances with nowhere to go except to pray fervently. If that's where you are at, then pray fervently. As long as we have access to God in prayer, there is hope. God can change things drastically and quickly when he is ready. See Genesis 39 to 49, Joseph in prison in Egypt. Uh, the third question in the second step that we've looked at to ask yourself is, if I can't change my circumstances, how does God want me to change my attitude? The psalmist here is aggressive in confronting himself three times to deal with his despair so that he can regain his sense of God's presence. He can't change his circumstances, but he can change his focus up from himself and his overwhelming situation to God. By the end of the psalm, his circumstances, circumstances haven't changed, but his attitude has because he has deliberately focused on the Lord. We are commanded in the Bible to rejoice in the Lord always, as Philippians 4.4, 4, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. The only way to obey that command sincerely is to change my attitude by changing my focus from self to God. The fourth question to ask oneself in the second step to uh, dealing with uh, depression is, is God in sovereign control of this situation or not? If so, what is he trying to teach me? Obviously, God is sovereign even over the evil and sinful things going on in this world. No one can thwart his purpose. Ephesians 1.11 can look up Ephesians 1 11, Acts 2 23, Acts 4 27 28. But it's easy to doubt or forget that fact when you are overwhelmed by a trial. So you have to affirm God's sovereignty in the midst of your trial. The psalmist does that here when he calls the waves that were crashing over him your breakers and your waves. Psalms 42 7. It was evil men who were oppressing him, but the psalmist knows that God has them on his leash, as it were. And that he was sent, he has sent this trial for his purpose. I hear some Christians say that God didn't cause a trial, he just allowed it, as if that somehow gets him off the hook, or they blame Satan for a trial as if he sneaked up and did it when God was asleep. But the Bible is clear that trials come from the Lord for our benefit. Psalm 66, 10 to 12, Romans 5, 3 to 5, Hebrews 12, 1 to 13, James 1, 2 to 4. You may think, how can God be good and bring a catastrophe into the lives of his children? Our problem is we underestimate the strength of our flesh. We are blind to the extent of our pride. We are dull as to how much we love this wicked world. So the Lord in, in love sends overwhelming trials to teach us not to trust in ourselves, but in him alone. That leads to the test step in dealing with depression. When you are depressed, your main need is to seek God himself, not just relief. When you are in emotional pain, you should see, to it, see it as an opportunity to seek God and grow in him, not just try for quick relief. Though the psalmist was in pain, he realized that his real need was God. Psalms 42, 1-2, uh, 4-6, 11, and Psalms 43, 4-5. In fact, he begins his psalm by recognizing that above all else, his need was for God and God alone. I love the way Matthew Henry puts it uh, in his comments on Psalm 42.1. Casting anchor does at first, he writes out the psalm. The first place you need to cast your anchor when the storms of depression hit is pray, O oh God, my soul pants and tests for you, the living God. So there are a series of questions, about five questions, to, uh, five uh, uh, sub uh, steps here uh, to take in the third step to addressing depression. 
Seek the person of God. The psalmist's test for God seems to grow in intensity, not slacken. Matthew Henry puts it uh, that the psalmist's thirst for nothing more than God, but still for more and more of Him. Depression can either wet or dull our thirst for God. God allows suffering to drive us closer in dependence upon Him. The need for the depressed person is reality with the living God. We are to hope in Him is our help. The psalmist knew God personally before this trial hit, not how he calls God my God. So note how he calls God my God in Psalms 42, 6 and 11, Psalms 43, 4 and 5, the God of my life, Psalms 42, 8, my rock, Psalms 42, 9, the God of my strength, Psalms 43, 2, God my exceeding joy, Psalms 43, 4. This tells us that the godly can feel depressed, but it also tells us that the time to prepare for Christ is before the heat. He has spent time with God before and knew God as his God. Therefore, he had a refuge, a familiar relationship to turn to in his time of despair. Number two step of the subset to step three, seek the presence of God. The psalmist wanted to appear before God, Psalm 42.2, to know the help of his presence, Psalm 42.5. That sounds good on the surface, but when you think about it, to appear in the presence of God can be a terrifying thing, even to the godly. If there is sin in your life, the light of God's presence shines on it, brings it into the open. So the only person who can truly desire the presence of God is the one who is willing to confess or forsake sin. God sometimes shows us our need for Him by depriving us of the sense of His presence and help, so that we will all the more seek Him. The thirst for God when His absence is a sure sign that we are His children. Number three, subset number three of part three, step three of how to deal with depression. Seek the praise of God. Psalms 42, 8, Psalms 43, 4. When you're depressed, the last thing you feel like doing is praising the Lord. But praise is a command, not a feeling. If we obey, we often feel better. The song drives the dry darkness away. To praise God is to focus on His attributes and actions. As we deliberately direct our thoughts to God's saving grace towards us in Christ, that he, by his mercy, drew us out of a terrible pit, our spirits will be lifted. Step 4 of uh, part of part 3 in dealing with depression, seek the precepts of God. Psalm 43 3. God's light and truth from his word will show us the way back. Again, even if you don't feel like it when you are depressed, read God's word and ask his Holy Spirit to shine his light into your dark, darkened heart. God's light and truth are threatening to the soul who does not want to confront his own sin and self-focus. But God's truth will lead you to his dwelling place where you will find God himself to be your exceeding joy. Then uh, the final step under the step, step, sub step three is seek God with the people of God. Psalm 42, 4. Psalm 43, 3 to 4. The psalmist seems isolated in his depression, which is often the case. But he realizes that the place of joy where the need of his soul will be met is in the corporate worship with God's people. When you're depressed, you often want to avoid people, especially gathering with God's people. But that's what you need. Go against your feelings and force yourself to gather, together with God's people to seek Him. There's something about corporate worship that cannot be experienced in individual worship. So, conclusion. Uh, Mark Martin Lloyd Jones, in his solid book, Spiritual Depression, His Causes and Cure, uh, in uh, page 20 to 21, comments, Have you not realized that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? Take those thoughts that come to you the moment you wake up in the morning. You have not originated them, but they start talking to you. They bring back the problem of yesterday. It is somebody is talking. Who is talking to you? Yourself is talking to you. Now, this man's treatment was this. Instead of allowing this self to talk to him, he starts talking to himself. The main art in the matter of spiritual living is to know how to handle yourself. You have to take yourself in hand. You have to address yourself, preach to yourself, question yourself. You must say to yourself, why art thou cast down? What business have you to be disquieted? You must turn on yourself. Upbraid yourself, condemn yourself, 
Exhort yourself and say to yourself, hope thou in God. Instead of muttering in this depressed, unhappy way, and then you must go on to remind yourself of God, who God is, and what God is, and what God has done, and what God has pledged himself to do. But especially, I mentioned that in taking diary, when you have encounters with God, when you have instructions from God, it's important to write them. And when you go to uh, issues like this, you go back to consult them. And what God has pledged himself to do. So, I uh, repeat that again. And when you must go on to remind yourself of God, who God is, and what God is, and what God has done, and what God has pledged himself to do. And having done that, end on this great note. Defy yourself and defy other people. Defy the devil and the whole world. And say with this man, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance, who is also the health of my countenance. And my God is God himself. You exceeding joy today. Psalms 43, 4. If not, don't rest until it is true. Your need is not happiness. Your need is not relief from your pain. Your need is God. Thirst after God. Rouse yourself to seek Him as your only source of hope and help. No matter how despairing your circumstances, hope in God. You shall again praise Him, the help of your confidence and your God. Now we have got discussion questions here. And I would like to hear from you after attempting to answer them. Whatever, whichever one you can answer. Now, number one is uh, four questions. Will going against your feelings create long term psychological damage? Support your answers with scripture. Number two, should Christians take medication for depression? Does this differ from taking aspirin for a headache? Number three, is there a difference between God allowing trials and sending them? What scriptures show that he sends them? Do any verses support the view that Satan sends trial? Number four, is there any biblical support that a depressed person needs to build his self-esteem? How should a depressed person view himself? So I pray and hope that this title today that we brought to you in a series on perfect stories are you depressed suffering waves of attacks don't quit three stories to deal three steps to dealing with depression biblically plus prayer and fasting for a shame and um, that's that so let me pray Our father and god i just want to thank you again for bringing us to the end of this um, part of um, our study um, on handling depression the perfect story series and perfect words perfect works perfect wonders but as the word has gone out i ask oh god that it begin to uh, bring healing to the depressed to lift them out of the pit into the position into seated in heavenly places uh, far above principalities and powers in the name of jesus because in heavenly places we have access to everything that we need to your presence your protection your preservation your provision and all your power in us and your encouragement and so lord i pray oh god that as many that are listening to me right now that are going through some of these things some of these depression lord i ask that healing will break forth i declare that the cloud of depression be lifted in the name of jesus christ i declare that your presence your healing power flow to them now and restore their soul in the name of jesus just like david just like elijah just like uh, Peter and so many others, uh, John the Baptist, that Lord, you will lift. Father, I declare that the depression be lifted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray for as many that are ill right now. Your word has gone forth. I ask that it brings healing. I declare as many that are healed, sick, be healed in the name of Jesus. As many that are in, uh, possessed, I declare, be delivered in the name of Jesus. As many that need restoration, I declare restoration is your portion now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. Thank you for causing the lives to fall for them in pleasant places. Father, we pray for the storm over Europe, basically Russia and Ukraine, which has tendency to expand. I declare this storm be seized right now by the authority in the name of Jesus. I ask as many that are calling up to you right now, hear them speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The blood shed, I declare, seize in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time and this season. 
in the name of Jesus. As we go through this year, which is uh, uh, could be turbulent, Lord, I ask that you will keep us in the whole of your hand. And because you are refuge and strength, a very present help in time of need, many that need your help right now, I ask that your presence go forth. Spirit of the living God, I call for resources for them from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, to meet them at the point of need, even right now. Need and strength, need and encouragement, need in upliftment, need in uh, in various ways of means, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answer prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to let you know, uh, my brothers and sisters, that sometimes when we ask the Lord to use us mightily in his kingdom, he brings us to the level where the people we are meant to reach are. If the people we were meant to reach are going to depression, God will certainly allow you to go through a pinch of that so that when you are speaking, you will speak their language. True experience, not true observation, but true experience. And so take inventory of what you go through that might necessary, that might uh, give you a clue to what it is that God wants you to do in this time and season. And as you come out of it, take notes so that you can be an instrument of equipping others who are going through this storm so they can rise up to do the things that God has called them to do and to be in Jesus' name. And Jesus is a true example. He came down to earth, went through death, suffered, uh, that's lent obedience by the things he suffered, lent, went through dying and all kinds of temptations that humans have so that through experience, he would be a better intercessor. And as now I am better intercessor, intercessor in praying for those who are going through depression, because I have gone through it. This is my first time. I've never had it in my life. Thank you for this experience. Give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name.